So here in our examples of grammatical errors, solecisms, irregularities, and oddities in the book of Revelation, we're going to consider multiple verses here in relationship to the beast. Here in Revelation 13, 14, it's the beast who is telling, okay? And the beast is in the neuter, where this is parsed in the genitive, but then the verb is parsed in the accusative masculine. Okay? And those dwelling is masculine, but again, it's the beast who is telling those. So this should not be parsed in the masculine, but the neuter. Also, it should be parsed in the genitive, not the accusative. Where again, the errors here are not in the English words. They're in the Greek words here. The error is in the original text of the Greek. And what's so astonishing is that when we back up to verse 1, here we find the beast, which is in the neuter, rising. Where in the previous verse, he's telling or saying. So you see, this is correct. Accusative, neuter, accusative, neuter. But then when we jump down to verse 11, again, we see the beast, accusative, neuter, rising. Accusative, neuter. This is correct. But then again, in the example, here the beast is telling it's incongruent. Where we have the two errors. This should be the genitive and then neuter, not masculine. So the writer got it right in multiple instances, and then in this one verse gets it wrong. Why is this? Well, as Mr. Harding goes into detail in his book, there was an opponent of John the Loved in the early church named Serinthus, who is suspected of being involved in the writing of the Apocalypse. He used the pseudographical name John, I believe, partially to discredit John the Loved, who was a priest, a Jewish priest, explained in this book here. 